Hello, and welcome to the Bold Leadership Story Show, where we talk about the experiences shaping exceptional lives. And today, I, I have the honor of speaking with Mr. Paul Rangel, and he's a business owner here in Temecula Valley. He's been in the area for over, what, 50, how long have you been in the area? Oh, Paul? 20 plus years. 20 plus years, long time. And you've you've been in the custom furniture business all that time, right? Beyond that. Beyond yes. that. So you yeah. you are like Mr. Custom Furniture, and you and your wife are, are uh, piloting your company, right? Yes, we are. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, so it's, it's sofa spectrum, custom sofas, furniture, and massage chairs. And uh, uh, your goal is to provide the best service in the furniture industry. And you've got over 115, this is amazing stat, 100, over 115 five-star Yelp reviews. Hard work, Jim. Hard A lot work. of hard work. Okay? Hard work to get that done. That's That's really cool. Um, and then you have a couple of taglines that caught my attention uh, that, that ready to serve you. And that's that makes sense. That one's really straightforward. It's like, boom, I'm ready to serve you. I'm here, baby. And and then the second one, your furniture. Your furniture teats. Your furniture. OK, I, OK, that makes sense. That, that's OK. Explain that for me. Furniture teats. Uh, I. have about a, maybe about a year ago, I decided to take my business and start educating the public. I'm already doing it here at the store. When clients come in uh -huh. uh, at Two Sofa Spectrum, they sometimes don't know what they look for or what's what's involved or, you know, there's a, a huge parameter. But if I take a moment to educate them here at the store while they're in here, Wow, they'll leave, whether they buy or they don't buy, they'll leave here with saying, man, that guy knows his stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been around a long time. So my job is to educate my clients so that they can make an informed decision to purchase furniture and they know what exactly what to look for. So I feel sorry sometimes when they leave my store and they go to another furniture store and they don't know what they're doing and they come back to our store. <laughs> but uh, the furniture teach part, I decided to make a couple of videos and reels on TikTok. And um, yeah, that's where it started, TikTok. And then I went into Instagram and it just kind of stuck mm -hmm. uh, as an introduction, like a one-liner. Hi, my name is Paul from Sofa Spectrum Furniture, your furniture teach. And it just kind of stuck. And then I started educating on fabrics, uh, durable fabrics, uh, construction, Sometimes you'll see some of my videos. I'm in the factory uh, educating the public oh. on how stuff is constructed, uh, how to get a better night's sleep. Uh, what's what's so good about a massage chair? I mean, we have a lot of stuff to educate the public on, and that's my job. Uh, I've, I've been here for many years, and I also educate people on leather, you know, uh, you know benefits of how deep a sofa might be, for example, for long TV view watching. There's a lot that goes into buying furniture. I know it's a competitive market, but if I can just separate myself by teaching the public, teaching my clients, teaching people out there in America, then that's that's what I've been, that's why I call myself your furniture teach. All right, I love it. I love it. I'm showing, uh, you probably notice I sh I'm showing your website right now as you're talking. Yes, um, and you're some, you got some beautiful stuff. Thank you. So, and and um, I imagine that it's a daunting task to have have a vision of something that you want, and then not knowing how manufacture how to manufacture as a as a consumer to go in and say, well, you know, how do I how do I make this vision happen? And mm -hmm. it sounds like you're the guy. Well. You and your team, because you guys have the experience and the 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 wherewithal and the know how and the resources to pull out pull that vision off. Yeah, I think Jim, for for us, I think uh, what you just described it stems from the mission that we believe in, and that's to be the best in service in the furniture industry. When you deal with clients, regardless of who they are, where they've been, or where they come from. 
if you put service first in humility, it becomes mm. a strength. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that if you have a servant heart and the customer sees and feels and hears that, they're going to be more trustworthy of you, which is going to indicate that whether they buy now or not, it's okay. They're still going to come back to you because they trust you. And that's one of the things that we focus on is making sure that service is taken care of, making sure that the follow-up call is done making sure that the follow through is completed, making sure that after the follow through is still followed through it again. Hmm. And I think that that little extra mile or second mile, if you will, it's what's put us, it's what separates us from other furniture companies or even other businesses, to be honest with you. Uh, even yeah. answering, the, even a little thing like answering your phone call, mm -hmm. something you didn't even think about, but if you're a business owner, don't you want to convey that business on the other side of the line when they call you? Just little things like that, that you can separate yourself from will make a big difference. So I encourage any business owners out there, or entrepreneurs uh, that are uh, looking to take their business next level to just focus on sometimes the little details and practice and improve on those. And man, it's going to take you to the next level. Awesome. So what do you see as your, it's, it's, I think a challenge to be, um, you know, in a small town, like well, Temecula is kind of a medium sized town now, but I mean, you've managed to really, I think, be part of the community. You're, you're not only a business owner, but you're, a, I think from what I see, people rely on you as a pillar in, in terms of your, you know, your being an ambassador um for the chamber you know it's, it's you were awarded the 2022 temecula chamber ambassador of the year what was it that you feel that you see contributed to your being awarded that yeah that is one that's very deep in my heart because we were just coming out of covid uh 20 late 2019 uh excuse me yeah, when COVID hit, it really hit everybody hard all of mm -hmm. 2019. And in 2021, I decided to join the Temecula Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, pardon me, 2022. Uh -huh. And I decided to go all in. January 1st of 2022, I decided to go all in. Okay. Why was that? Because I've tried Chambers of Commerce before. And I didn't give it the service that it needed. In order for you to be successful in the chamber, you have to show up. You have to be involved. Mm -hmm. So when I, my wife and I, we talked about it. We prayed about it. And we said, honey, if, if you allow me to do this, I know it's going to benefit our company. It's going to benefit our store by me getting out. Instead of waiting for customers to come in, I'm going to go out and share our stories, share what we do, share what we're about. And through that, I know we're going to be blessed. So January 1st, 2022, I decided to uh, call the chamber. I, I had cash on hand and I said, I want to join, but you need to come and pick up the cash. Uh -huh. You need to come and pick up the cash. And naturally, that's not a normal thing they do, but obviously they want to get members so they said, okay, well, go ahead and go to the store and pick up the cash. Needless to say, Elaine Bartolome, who was the uh, the chamber uh, it, you know, membership director at that time, mm -hmm. she came to the store and met me, and we had a great time. I showed her what we're all about, and I gave her the cash. And she reluctantly took it back to the chamber and made sure that everybody counted it out, exactly every dollar that I gave to her. But the commitment was to go all in to the Chamber of Commerce. The mm -hmm. commitment was there. They have an ambassador program that if you do certain things within a month or within a year, uh, it's 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 like a checklist. Go to ribbon cutting events, make a few phone calls to local business owners, uh, us collaborate and connect with other business owners. There's a whole checklist. Mm -hmm. I completed the whole year in one month. Wow. Okay. So you all were right. you jumped all in. I jumped all in. And what were the what were the results of that? The decision. Well, the result, I mean, you made a decision. It sounds like 
you you made a leadership decision in your company for and, and it it sounds from your description that it wasn't just for business it was more of a this is a personal commitment yeah i've always had the heart to be a mentor and serve uh some of the younger generation uh, in fact, uh, the chamber has a group called the Valley Young Professionals, mm -hmm. and I always had a heart to mentor and guide young entrepreneurs. Uh, maybe they can, we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. I can shadow them. They can shadow me. They can hear me. And uh, through that, through that uh, realm, uh, it just exploded into all the all businesses basically. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where it comes from. It just comes from making sure that uh, my my radar ears are always on to connect businesses together so that together they can create more business. And so I'm pretty good at that. And I've connected quite a few businesses uh, with that thought process. And again, it's that serving others mentality mm -hmm. that has brought much blessings to Sofa Spectrum Furniture. Yeah, I see um, like on your Instagram, I'm going to share your Instagram here, if that's okay, mm -hmm. uh, where I mean, you're putting, you're putting your, you know, the, the rubber is meeting the road here with you. I mean, what you say is actually happening. I can see from the images. I mean, you're out and about, you're talking to people, you're putting, you know, you're, you're helping other businesses get uh, exposure and be seen in positive ways through your energy and through your, your, your just constant, you know, fun and smiles and being out and about doing, you know, things and helping people to, uh, to have good, a good day, you know, just make their day better. Right. Yeah. It's uh, one of those things that I'm passionate about. That's my wife right there. That's my wife, Lisa, right there. Yep. That's my wife, Lisa. That's my bride. Excellent. Um, just uh thankful that she supports me in what i do uh -huh. uh, and in managing to balance our home and managing our business and of course serving the community it takes it takes a good balance to make sure that it doesn't get out of balance right yeah well you're just out you know doing your business but you're actually also helping the community to to you know just have a self image it you, what you're doing is creating a self image i think for Temecula Valley it's like this is this is the ideal situation you know everybody's always worried about you know what's going on in the news but you're kind of ignoring that and just going forward and having a good life and it's, i love that thank you i appreciate it. it's funny you mentioned that we don't watch the news uh <laughs> We really, we don't watch the news. We get the news from others. Right. Yeah. If it's bad enough, people will tell you, right? Hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? And I go, no, tell me about it. Well, this is what's going on. <laughs> so we get it from others. Oh, good for you. So what is it that uh, I see you, you're, you're a volunteer for, uh, and you have a heart for nonprofits. Yes. Tell me about that. When the kids were younger, uh, we lived in the Arcadia, uh, Pasadena area. Okay. We also worked in Pasadena, my wife and I. Mm -hmm. Pretty area. Yeah, it's just magnificent. Love it. Our store happened to be right on, right off of Colorado Boulevard. That's where the Rose Parade goes by. Mm-hmm. And the um, Pasadena movie uh, to make uh, Pasadena live theater was there as well. On Mentor. and that was a furniture store you had. Yeah, we 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 worked at a furniture store. Okay, good location. Seems like yeah, yeah. And so every year during Thanksgiving, I would get the kids up at the crack of dawn. We put ourselves as serving food to the people that are needy, the, the mm -hmm. homeless, the people that don't have anything to eat for Thanksgiving at the local park there off of mm -hmm. Orange Grove. Not kidding you, at least four or 500 people would show up to this. Mm -hmm. Cars would drive up with the casseroles of green beans. The turkeys would show up. It's a massive undertaking. So I, from the very get-go, I would put the kids to 
teach them to serve food, mm -hmm. to serve others, and to see that it not everything is a you know not everything is kosher for everybody, not everything is good for everybody. Mm -hmm. And through that, we did that year after year, year after year. And so that serving part of the nonprofit stuck with me. Uh, and so I have a big heart to serve. Also, my mother uh, passed away from breast cancer. And usually, sorry, sorry uh, hear that. yeah, usually there's certain things that trigger you to go out and serve the community, especially help the nonprofits. Something either you, you did or something that happened to your life that causes that trigger or that 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 inner passion to go serve nonprofits, and through that, I've had a, a just a uh, a uh, a need, so to speak, to go out and share the love to nonprofit. A lot of nonprofits, you know, they you just because you call yourself a nonprofit doesn't mean anything. You have to know what the cause is. You have to know what the funds are, where the funds are going to. You have to know. Uh, are they really using the funds to do what they say they're going to do? I mean, there's a lot that's involved. And thankfully, here in the Temecula, Marietta, Menifee Valley, Lake Elsinore, there are some great nonprofits. Mm -hmm. You know, JDS Academy mm -hmm. is a phenomenal nonprofit. Oh, they do helps. such good work. Yeah, They do incredible work with the kids and the youth, and they put on the drama shows, mm -hmm. and they have the – the Digifest, where you can literally turn in a little video and compete against other people. I mean, it's fantastic. And they also have Spirit of Innovation, which is a local news channel that teaches the local public the real news, not the news that's on Channel 4. We're talking about real local news, like being watchful that your kids don't drown, how to store batteries and trash them correctly, Little things like that that you really don't hear on the news. Mm -hmm. Spirit of Innovation news from JDS Academy is incredible. Uh, there is the uh, Holocaust Remembrance Foundation that I'm involved with right now. Okay. Of the Valley. A lot of people uh, from, you know, 20 to 40 year olds, they don't even, they don't know what the Holocaust, what is that word? They don't even know what it is. Mm. And so we're putting together and raising funds for a memorial that's already been approved in the city of Murrieta at the field of honor. I don't know if you've been there, but at the field of honor and by, right by city hall, mm -hmm. there is the, uh, all of the, uh, uh, the world war, uh, Vietnam war, um, um, uh, structures or stone structures of remembrance mm -hmm. well we're going to have an actual uh interactive remembrance let me see if i have a flyer here. yeah here it is right here oh beautiful see right there yeah the funds we're building for that right there where local schools elementary high school middle school can go through there and they can learn about what took place and the horrible things that took place that never again, something like that should happen to any human being. Mm. You know, that was a horrible tragedy. So it's to educate, to love others and to have peace uh, with, with, with everyone. So, and that's what this is going to teach right here. So we're raising funds. Actually, there's a concert coming up uh, next, next uh, Thursday. If you'd like to go and donate, mm -hmm. that's going to be at the South coast winery. Uh, but that 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 little things like the every penny counts and it's going to be a legacy that can be left behind for many, many years. It's something that is we're really, really trying really hard to get as much funds for that as possible, because that's going to make an impact on the community. Mm. Sharing love and making sure pe people don't hate that's impactful on the community. Absolutely. So, yeah. Wow. Very, very uh, inspiring. Yes. Uh, thank you for sharing that. The um, What do you see as, that's, you know, you, you're a, you know, uh, a guy who's, I don't know, I wouldn't expect you with what you're doing to be as influential as you are on social media. What was it? Because I, I see you on Facebook. I see you on Instagram. You're on TikTok. You're doing a lot of cool stuff. Like, 
almost like a 20 something would, you know, you're out there, you got a lot of energy. You're just doing, you're just stepping out and doing stuff. And there's like no fear. What is it that's inside you that drives you to, to be that way? Well, do, do you agree with me on that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think again, it goes back to what we first started talking about, Jim, and that's service, serving okay. humility, serving humility that comes from above, you know, uh, I'm a believer in that relationship with, with my Lord Jesus Christ and through his strength, through his guidance, through my, um, uh, you know, uh, my humility and strength. I think that's what guides me and propels me to go out and touch people's life through love, mm. you know, through kindness, uh, without expecting anything return. I don't want anything return. I just want to love on you. I just want to, uh, you know, if you encourage you, support you, maybe send you, maybe you're having a hard time finding something. I might have the answer. I don't want to keep it. I want to give it to you. Mm. And so through that strength, through that passion is what you see. <laughs> you see that. And it filters through when I'm talking to people. So, oh yeah, um, absolutely. It's I, it's really cool to see. I, you know, it's not selfish. It's like a lot of people. I, I've, I've been doing marketing for a while, and and it's it's marketing is like you know you're pounding on a message so that people will see you and then they'll come buy from you. But that's not your vibe. You're coming across as you know. Hey, I'm I'm part of this community. I love what I do. I love helping people and I want to give and it's like you're you're just in this constant give mode and it's so inspiring for me to see that and I, I appreciate it I just I just want to tell you that thank you um I'm, I'm I'm thankful for an opportunity to serve you know we we don't know from one day to another what's going to happen to us mm -hmm. um one day you're fine. Next day you might be knocked down, you know, not able to get out of bed. And, and there's a lot of people out there that are struggling. There are a lot of people that are hurting in this world. And while I still have my, my eyes, my, my nose to smell things, my mouth to taste, my hands to touch, all the things that I'm thankful for, I want to use them the best that I can on a daily basis. Beautiful. Well, uh, Paul, there's a question that I ask everybody on the show, and it's it's um, it goes like this. Taking a look at your life, what was the most, the boldest leadership decision that you've made, and what were the consequences? Well, one of the boldest decisions that we had to make was when I was working for Corporate America out uh with other i was a area manager a regional manager for stores multi-store manager for furniture stores mm -hmm. and i was working at a furniture store in orange county and this lady was trying to recruit my wife lisa who is an interior designer by by an architectural design mm -hmm. that's her gift it's not just Paul at Soul Perspective. My wife, Lisa, has a huge behind-the-scenes part. Without her, I, I'm i I'm not a zero. We all have but, yeah. needs so, that, yes. So um, this lady wanted to recruit her, but she wanted to go have her go work at – this is a great story, by the way. She wanted to go recruit her to go work in or Ontario. Okay. And – my wife was taking care of our son, homeschooling him and trying to, we're, you know, we're at that point where we're trying to maybe get a little bit of extra cash flow going. How old was your son? My son at that time was uh, 10 years old. Okay. All right. Yeah, so about busy. 10, busy, 10, busy. Eight, eight, excuse me, eight years old. He was eight because we've been here. Yeah. Eight years old. Okay. Same, same. Yeah. So he was about eight. He's now 17. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we said, why don't we open up our own store at wow. that time? Why okay. don't we open up our own store? And so after much thought, we decided, okay, we're going to go. I was still working in Orange County. We decided to open up our store. We drove 
to Ontario to personally tell the lady, I'm sorry, we cannot accept your offer. She was the one that wanted to recruit my wife. And guess what? She owns a manufacturing plant for sofas. Oh, wow. Okay. So we said, sorry, I'm sorry, we can't join. And my wife, you know, we, we decided we're going to open up our own store. And she goes, what? She goes, she said, yes, we're going to open up our own store. She says, okay, great. I'm going to help you, she said. Oh. I'm going to help you guys open up your store. Wow. And that's one of the biggest decisions that we had to make. If you had to say it was opening up our own store versus working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Not only has it are we are we breaking records with 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 salary or income? The answer is no. Okay. Right. Are we making a good living and a happy life and a blessed life? The answer is yes. Sometimes it's not about the money, Jim. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about balance. Guess what? We have our own store. We're closed on Sundays. We have appointments on Sunday. Our hours are 11 to 5, Monday through Saturday. I'm home by 6 o'clock having dinner with the kids or nowadays they're in their rooms locked up doing their own thing, you know. We literally have to call them on the cell phone to come down and have dinner with us <laughs> in our own house. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and so yeah. um, that's what that's what the decision has given us. I'm able to, we were able to take the family to the church that we belong to, Orchard Church in Marietta uh, on Sundays. Uh, I'm home for dinner. I can actually, uh, in these past eight years, I was able to attend my son's basketball games. You know how wow. big that is? That's huge. It's huge. That's huge. Working for somebody else, I work seven days a week sometimes. Mm-hmm. Driving two and a half hours to Orange County, two and a half hours back, okay? Missed all the birthdays, missed all the dad, Father's Days, missed all the Memorial Days, Labor Days. Everybody's barbecuing. Guess where Paul's at? Working. Yeah. Because I'm I'm in the retail world, and that's what the retail world I evolved. So one of the biggest decisions that we made and boldest decision was to do that. Now, keep in mind that my company that I work for was not aware that we were thinking about opening up our own business. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're very careful not to have a uh, conflict in regards to what they sold to what we sold. Right. Because the company I work with sold only leather furniture. Okay. We only had fabric furniture. That okay. way it's, you know, separate. There was no conflict there. No conflict there. So, after much thought, and we parted ways with the owner uh, after resolving our issues with the previous owner I worked with, he actually thanked me and says, Paul, you are the only one that has stepped out to try this on their own. I remember because I did it myself when I was doing my thing with the previous company, I decided to step out. That man has like 20 stores now the one that did it oh, and okay. he congratulated me he said paul you know I, I i want you to stay with me and and i appreciate but what you're doing is is pretty amazing so to get that you know recognition from the man that you know started it the same way it's it's it was a good feeling mm. um so uh my wife was homeschooling here for about you know uh, a year and then she said paul i can't take it no more i need your help and that's when she sat me down in the chair and she gave me a hard interview and she asked me some tough questions. She said, you think you said you're good in sales? All right. She gave me a pin and she said, okay, sell this to me. You know, so she was very hardcore in, in her interview questions, but mm -hmm. she decided to hire me. She did give me a, my wife gave me a 90 day probation and I did manage to secure the job and pass all the requirements. So I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> All right. That's a good story. She puts you to task. Well, that, that sounds like a really smart thing. Uh, you stepped up because you yeah. were in operations, right? In the pretty much, or what were you, what were you doing? I was you operate, sales manager. 
sales Versus, manager. Okay. So, yeah. so you have some sales experience. Oh yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's a whole different thing being the owner versus being an employee. It's tell me, tell me about that, that transition that you, did you, did you have to kind of make a, a mental switch? It and, took well, a good. What were the challenges you faced there? I couldn't believe that I was actually off on a Sunday. I mean, it was uh, that it was <laughs> weird. It felt weird. Yeah. It felt strange. It took a while for me to really realize. In fact, to this day, we go, we look, my wife and I look there and stuff and go, honey, do you know we're, we're, we're business owners? Did you know that? Yeah. It's hard it to kind believe. of pinch yourself. Yeah. It's hard to believe we're business owners, right, honey? Yeah. It's hard to believe that <laughs> because we love what we do. Yeah. We love what we do and we're not, we're doing it for our, for us and our family as opposed to, you know, working for somebody else. Nothing wrong with working for somebody else, by the way. Those that are working out there. Yeah. Oh, by all sure. means, give wh wherever you work, give it your best. Go for it. You know, act like you're the owner if you're working for somebody else. Get there half an hour early. You know, do those things that that way when you want to open up your business, you're preparing yourself for it mm -hmm. and you go for it. I highly encourage you to go for it. So beautiful. Any any final stories or any anything you'd like to say? Yeah. Uh, when you're out in the community and you're helping businesses and you're helping people in general without expecting a return, it's amazing how we're all connected in one form or another and how much we all know each other or heard of, of one another. Hmm. I, um, during COVID, I have a client who wanted to start a group for Latinos. Ah, okay. And um, we started out, it originally was going to be a directory for only Spanish businesses. We wanted to bless the community with the best, you know, one auto mechanic, one restaurant or two restaurants, one doctor, one dentist, one, one of everything in their professions and create a Latino directory. Okay. Okay. But that was, we're having a hard time recruiting people during COVID. We were even meeting with masks at that mm -hmm. time. Okay. So after a year and a half of, of, of still connecting and not giving up on our, on our goal, we decided to create an, another name, a sub, a sub name, so to speak. And the name turned out to be Latino Talk to Megula. And we figured, you know, you know, to make them talk, we read the talk, all the talks, why not have a Latino talk? It made sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And so guess what, Jim, that took off and people started joining. They were following us on Facebook. If you happen to go to Latino talk on Facebook, you see we're approaching 3000 followers in a matter of a year and some odd. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the growth. And through the connections and collaborations of sharing their posts on, on social media, we've been able to connect one business with another to collaborate on certain things. And that's why it's so important to get out there because you don't know um, who's going to be out there that you're going to meet that you might be able to refer them to to help the other business or connect with somebody else. We're all connected somehow, some way, believe it or not. We are all connected. Yep. That's that's our page. 2.7 thousand and growing. Wow. Uh, and again, that's only been, you know, a few years of, of hard work. And um, it, it's just been great. We're going to have a mixer at Casa Mena. That's a, This is a great opportunity right there. This business is a new business owner, Casa Jimenez on Jefferson. Uh -huh. They're a brand new business owner. They've been around for a long time, but I decided to get in there and see if we can bring uh, more people to his company. So we decided to hold a business mixer next week. We've already got about 70 people uh, registered to come to this. And the Casa Jimenez has some great deals. They got $10 uh, lunch specials that they're going to be able to allow us to have that on the night. And they got $5 margaritas if you like to drink. Oh, uh, 
Yeah. Yep. Five dollar margaritas, and guess what? It's fresh fruits. I mean, it's oh wow, it's great. So um, we're trying to bring the people to him so that they can know uh, more, and through that, that we'll be able to connect and collaborate more businesses. So that that's what I wanted to share is get out of your comfort zone, you guys. Mm. Step out, go and make a difference in somebody's life. Don't expect anything in return. Do it from the heart. Do it with love, and you'll see. Not only will the doors open with, for you, but also the windows. Mm. Wow, beautiful. Thank you, Paul Rangel, for spending time with me on the show today. A bold Thank leader. You. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a I'm a very fortunate, and I'm thankful that I'm, I have my health and onward and upward. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Hang All for right. a second. So we'll say goodbye. Say goodbye right now. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna sign off for the for the show. So right. I mean, I'd like to chat chat after. So hang on. Okay. All right.